Okay, this is the script for episode 8, Boom, for the TV show America, the Story of Us, and this is group 4 from the AM, and their topic is the Great Migration, and they will be presenting to the class on Monday, March 7th, 2016. The introduction is going to be by Adriana. Hello everyone, my name is Adriana. Today we're going to talk about the Great Migration, the relocation of more than six million African Americans from the rural south to the cities of the north from 1914 to 1945, which had a huge impact on urban life in the United States. For this presentation, we divided the project into four parts. In the first part, Mercedes will talk about why African Americans decided to move north. Then Ala will talk about how the African Americans lived in the north and how were their, how was their condition. And how was their condition. In the third part, Joanna will talk about the Red Summer and how and how racism was part of daily life. To finish the presentation, Hernan will talk about how African Americans moved to their own neighborhoods and the rise of ghettos. Now Mercedes will continue with part one. Hello, everybody. Hello everybody. Why did African Americans move to the North? I'm going to explain more about the reasons why the migrants decided to go North. The Great Migration The Great Migration was the movement of African Americans from the rural South to the urban industrial north. The main reason for migration was the <clears throat> segregation and lack of social and economic opportunities in the south. African Americans believed migration would secure full citizenship, citizenship rights that they were denied in the south. About 3,500 African Americans were lynched between 1882 and 1968. White storekeepers and restaurant and theater owners refused to serve African Americans or attempted to drive them away by rude treatment or inflated prices. The Civil Rights Law of Civil Rights Law of 1885. That's new for me. 1885 Civil Rights Law? Okay, something new. Quite early. The Civil Rights Law of 1885 stated that places of public accommodation had to serve all people regardless of color or race. But African Americans who tried to challenge discriminatory practices in court could lose. For example, in 1900, a black hairdresser sued an Indianapolis hotel where she was not allowed to use the elevator to reach the room of her customer. The court accepted the argument that because the hairdresser was not a guest herself, she had no right to use the hotel's elevator. Many African Americans even did not have the money or time to fight discrimination in court.
There were also other factors that pulled migrants to the north, such as labor shortages in northern factories due to World War I that resulted in thousands of jobs available to African Americans in steel mills, railroads, meat packing plants, and the automobile industry. Northern businessmen sent labor agents to recruit southern workers. Northern companies offered special incentives to encourage African American workers to relocate, including free transportation and low-cost housing. African Americans in southern states heard about opportunities in the North as a sort of promised land through labor recruiters, black-run newspapers, relatives, and friends. Now, Ala will continue with part three. Is that part three? Excuse me. Part two. Now Allah will continue with part two. Thank you, Mercedes. The migrants from fourteen state The migrants from fourteen states of the South, especially Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas, headed to large industrial centers Detroit, Pittsburgh, New York, Chicago, and Boston. This journey to the north was made by train, boat, bus, sometimes car, and even horse-drawn cars. Horse-drawn carriages is what we would say. The word car actually came from carriage. And when we use horse, we say carriage. So this journey to the north was made by train, boat, bus, sometimes car, and even horse-drawn carriages. In the decade between 1910 and 1920, the New York African-American population rose by 60 percent, Chicago's by 150 percent, Detroit experienced an amazing growth of 600 percent. Detroit with its automotive and war industries was one of the main destinations for southern African-American migrants. The well-known Ford plant was the key reason for this. Ford was the first auto manufacturing company which hired African Americans. It offered jobs for African Americans at $5 a day, which was the same as for white workers. This amount of money was almost twice as large as the African, excuse me. This amount of money was almost twice as large as the average wage in the country. Moreover, Ford sent agents to the South to promote the jobs and hire African Americans. Despite high wages, African Americans were segregated at the plant and in life outside it. The migrants could only take the most dangerous, dirty, and tough jobs. Besides this, there was also competition for living space in the cities. Whites refused to rent out or sell their houses to the newcomers. Black migrants were treated like second-class people. Through this period, racial tension was about to explode. Unofficial segregation of African Americans was everywhere, even on the beaches of Lake Michigan. Now Joanna will continue with Part 4. Actually, I think it should be Part 3. Part 3. Now, Joanna will continue with part three. Thank you, Allah. Hi, good morning, everyone. As Allah said, although there was no official segregation, whites discrimination against African Americans was everywhere. They didn't want African Americans. To live in their neighborhood, and they also didn't want African Americans to be where they hung out and relaxed, like parks or beaches. What happened on the beach of Chicago in 1919 lit the fuse of the well-known Red Summer. The city's beaches along Lake Michigan were segregated by custom rather than by law. 
On July 27, 1919, a young African-American man named Eugene Williams went there to swim and play with his friends. A white guy was throwing stones into the water, and they thought he was just playing. But later they found it was not a joke, and William was hit by the stone and drowned. Instead of arresting the white guy who was throwing the stones, the police on duty arrested an African-American guy, which enraged the African-American people on the beach, and they began to fight against white people. These kind of riots lasted eight days, and more than 500 people were injured and 38 people died, 23 of whom were African American. Other accounts reported 50 people were killed, with unofficial numbers and rumors reporting more. It was reported most of the white riots were led by the well-established ethnic Irish, whose territory bordered the African-American neighborhood. Those white mobs destroyed hundreds of mostly African-American homes and businesses on the south side of Chicago, and 1,000 black families were left homeless. It was just the beginning of the riots, which later spread to over 24 other cities across America. In response to the Red Summer, the African-American, excuse me, in response to the Red Summer, the African Blood Brotherhood formed in northern cities to serve as an armed resistance movement, and protests and appeals to the federal government continued for weeks. Whatever the result was, we all know that, unfortunately, there is still discrimination today against African Americans. Now, welcome Hernan to draw the conclusion for our group. Thank you. Thank you, Joanna. But the promised land was not the milk. Thank you, Joanna. But the promised land was not the land of milk and honey. While it was true that it was better than the South, they still had to live separately, African Americans on one side and whites on another. Still. They still had to live separately, African Americans on one side and whites on another. The result was the growth of ghettos, Harlem in New York, Paradise Valley in Detroit, the Hill District in Pittsburgh, etc. But African American communities African American communities also meant a majority, and majority means power. This led to the election of African American leaders, including members of Congress. And finally today, the first African American president, a former senator from Illinois. I hope you enjoyed our presentation and learned something about the Great Migration.